about myself. Uh, I'm Mainer. I come from way up north where we have more moose than we have people. Mm -hmm. I said that to you guys before. Um, it's a great place to be from. Maine is a, a huge state and wonderful, but my training brought me from Maine where I went to college to University of Chicago, Pritzker School of Medicine. Uh, so I left Chicago and headed to New York, actually, <laughs> went to Rochester, New York, where I did my residency in Medpeds. And then I stayed there for a chief residency and went on to do um, uh, a practice uh, in Webster, uh, New York, for a little while. And then I got wooed back to Maine and eventually found myself working for UMHS. And I've been very, very happy to be here with these awesome students. Just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do here in the fifth semester. The way I look at fifth semester is I basically divide it in two. We have the first part of fifth semester, which is Introduction to Clinical Medicine too. Um, that follows what is uh, taught on the island with uh, physical diagnosis and ICM-1. After our 10 weeks in Introduction to Clinical Medicine too, we move forward to do an intensive study program. Uh, we partnered with Kaplan. It's a Kaplan review. And these lovely students get to, <laughs> initially when they come on board, uh, take what we call a diagnostic exam. A grueling eight-hour exam, guys? Yes. Yes? yes. yes. <laughs> on the first week, actually, their very first week here yes. of orientation yes. on, I think it was Thursday, yes. right, this semester? The third or fourth day. Yeah. Third or fourth day. So they sat right in after hearing, I don't know, five hours of orientation on Wednesday, exactly. sat in on Thursday and did their eight-hour, uh, what we call a Kaplan, Kaplan diagnostic exam. So they all get scores from that, and based on their scores, um, they are given an opportunity to do either a volunteer, uh, voluntary study plan with our education specialists specialist Mia Taylor or those who have scored at under a certain number are asked to come in and meet weekly with her and she does a, a great job putting an individualized study plan mm -hmm. together uh, for our students. So that's the first week pretty busy for them and then the weeks two until for about eight weeks we go into the meat of the program. Yeah. So let's talk about what the meat of the program is. You guys all remember Mondays. Yes. All right. Definitely. So Mondays are kind of our long, we're kind of heavy in the beginning of the week, right? So we start Mondays with getting you guys out of bed fairly early. Yeah. You come in pretty bright eyed, bushy tailed with your <laughs> coffee in hand, and we do a lecture. So this lecture is actually a lecture series that's based on our organ systems. So we begin with, uh, respiratory system, move on to cardiovascular, move on to GI, we do some neuro, some endocrine, pretty intense week to week. So Mondays are the lectures. Following the lectures, you all got a chance to go into your small groups. So each of our students were placed um, with basically a ratio of six to eight, nine students in each of the small groups with one attending. And those attendings, let me tell you a little bit about those attendings. You guys all remember your attendings? Yes, yes very fondly. These guys come from most all come from Maine, but they come from different aspects of medical education or medical practice, really. Yeah. Some are, we have cardiologists. Mm -hmm. We have, what, what was your attending? Tell me. Uh, internal. Internal medicine. Mm -hmm. We had the cardiology and family medicine. Cardiology yeah. and? I had you, but we all <laughs> You did have me. Okay. <laughs> so I'm a med peds trained individual. Yes. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> so good. So, and we also had a physician's assistant working with us as yes. well. So it was, it was a, a, an opportunity for students to do one uh, attending to seven or eight students and, and just review physical exam, mm -hmm. kind of get you guys all buff, buffed up on your physical exam, get you ready for the next day which was the big day. The big day. The big day, virtual <laughs> clinic day. Yes. So what is virtual clinic to you, Jared? Uh, virtual clinic, it's pretty much, uh, every week we're pretty much systems based. And so what we do is we, uh, we go through all the diseases for our Monday lecture. And then on Tuesday is pretty much when we practice the, the actual clinical aspect. And so we go through the whole physical examination. We work on developing our communication skills. And one of the, the strong points of, of virtual clinics or that we actually have to write, you know, things we want to work on, develop uh, professionally. Um, so a lot of what mine were uh, had to deal with, um, you know, making sure I hit every point on, you know, a, a general history. Mm -hmm. And so every single week, I try and work towards that, closer to that. Um, so you know, it's great because as well yeah. because what you get is you don't just get the feedback from the the doctor that's in the room, you know, watching you, but you also get the feedback from the patient. And so it kind of helps you introspectively. Uh, reflect on you know how you are as a people person. Yeah. So that was some that was one of the great benefits, and that's what virtual clinic was to me. So just to wheel back a little bit, so we explain to the audience what virtual clinic is. It's essentially a room where the students will come in. Two students pair up together. They come in. One acts as the the student doctor, and the other one acts as the student presenter. And in the room, you have an attending 
and a standardized patient. Now, these standardized patients come from all different walks of life. They're absolutely fantastic, male, female, all ages. Mm -hmm some serious and some jokers, some really <laughs> great people that have done a fantastic job helping our students communicate better with patients. Mm -hmm. So that's the that's the picture of what a virtual clinic is. Mm -hmm. And as Jared was saying, they each are asked to write an index card and or to have an index card ready that says the things that they're trying to improve on. Mm -hmm. So we know it's, it's a self-reflection, right? You're mm -hmm. reflecting on what did I hear last week that I needed to improve on. You bring it to the attending and the standardized patient and we see if you're have accomplished your goals. So I think that's that's wonderful. And how about you with your experience in virtual clinic, Desiree? Well, I just piggybacking on that, that's one of my favorite things about the virtual clinic is the feedback. Like you get so much one on one attention. And no matter um, which room you go into with which standardized patient or attending, you have that note card and you're really just making that baseline and you're growing and, and they're seeing it, you're feeling it. And it's like it's a really good vibe. And um, you learn a lot in a really short amount of time and, you know, you just throw yourself out there and it's putting your clinical skills and your communication skills together all at one time. And just that together, it's it's a good challenge and it feels good once you get through it. Because you have to take the history. Yes. And you actually do the physical yes. on a patient. And most of these patients don't fortunately have the ailments that are created for the case. Yes. But they're either shown pictures of what they should be seeing if they're looking in an ear or throat, or um, they're told what kind of sounds they might be hearing on mm -hmm. the lung exam. And these students have to figure this out in the moment, like, oh, yeah. They're crackles, and this yeah. person has fever. Oh, yeah. my God, I think maybe this is a pneumonia. Yeah. Let's do egophony. Let's do bronchopathy. Yeah. Let's do tactile fremenis. So they have to put, you guys have to put this all together yes. in that moment. Yes. And then not only that, but they have to sit with the, pa with the patient and say, this is what I believe you have. Yeah. Now, remember, Nina, that hemonc week. How tough was that when you had a patient maybe that had a diagnosis that was somewhat devastating to tell him? Tell us a little about. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those moments where you just really have to find your humility and in that moment you have to share potentially some really devastating news to a person that was not expecting it or even if they were expecting it no one likes to get bad news so you be, you having that power in that moment really shows how how you'll be eventually as a doctor because you even though you do have all that power this is this is something that will change someone's life mm -hmm. so um, do you know going back to the whole concept of VC or virtual clinic it's just really important to have you know this opportunity to trial and error yeah. how mm -hmm. you yes. deliver safe. news yeah. in a safe yeah. place and I think that's really great mm -hmm. super awesome great. I'm just gonna jump back in here for a second um, we we're only up to Tuesday by the way only up to <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of uh, folks that just signed on a little bit later and they didn't catch the first five minutes so I just want to I'm going to jump in here from time to time just to catch everybody up who has just joined us so we're here uh, live in our fifth semester campus up at Portland Maine uh, this is the University of Medicine and Health Sciences we are a four-year MD program the first section of medical school is done, which is called basic sciences, is done on the island of uh, St. Kitts. And then students, before they officially start their clinical rotations, and what a clinical rotation means is you're going to do a certain amount of weeks in OBGYN, psychiatry, peds, and so on. But before we allow you to go there, uh, you are going to be sent up here in lovely Portland, Maine, and you're going to be learning a lot of practical skills that you're going to need to make sure that you're absolutely polished before uh, you start your clinical rotations. And one of the questions that I would like to throw out there is actually a very important question. Transitioning from the basic sciences to Portland, Maine. Tell me, how was that for you guys? Anyone can take. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, Portland, Maine, uh, down on when you first start uh, your basic sciences on St. Kitts, you're kind of working towards the, that fifth semester, which is right up here in Portland, Maine. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is pretty much knowing that you are one step closer to your clinical rotations towards eventually becoming a medical doctor. Um, and what Portland does is it's essentially, you know, having one foot still in the books because we're doing this right before we write our USMLE step one. So one of one foot is you know still in the books while we're preparing and doing our virtual clinics mm -hmm. and ICM, but then the other uh, foot is actually um, with the clinical experience that we gain throughout this whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, we get uh, clinical we do a preceptorship uh, for this semester, and that uh, has to deal a lot with you know actually going in and, and shadowing a physician, mm -hmm. and um, we get to work and practice on some of our clinical skills. Mm -hmm. um, 
On Thursday and Fridays. On Thursdays right? and Fridays, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the big thing, you know, transitioning, what that meant was, you know, I'm one step closer. And, you know, that really helped me motivate, uh, motivate myself towards working towards, uh, you know, studying harder and getting closer to uh, writing that step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely like the transition because just like you said, between the books and the clinical practices, you just get a really well-rounded experience while you're here. I absolutely love my preceptorship program. I was with a reconstructive surgeon and he just was awesome. He was a great teacher and he definitely challenged me a lot. And then I got to come in the classroom and um, you know, learn all these great lectures system-based. And then I got to go into the virtual clinic and practice my clinical skills. And um, then we're now we're in the Kaplan Review. And so while I'm through these long, you know, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. lectures, which are also system-based, I'm reviewing all the skills and things, making the connections from St. Kitts, and I'm telling myself, okay, honest assessment, these are the things that I feel strong in, and these are the things I need to work on, and so I'm getting that attention right here, right now, in the classroom before, you know, I go my way to take the step, so I feel like it's a really great time. One thing that I would like to add on to that also is, you know, to reminisce a little bit about the islands mm -hmm. since we've left, um, but they really do an incredible job of preparing yeah. us to be up here. I mean, you know, we mentioned these lectures that we have on Mondays in the mornings that last about four hours or so, but truly I think that is more of a review and refresher for us. We have to, it is very fast paced because yeah. we're covering an entire system in a few hours, but <laughs> I think that that <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> go as smoothly if we didn't have such a great background from the island, whether it be in pathology yep. or pharmacology, mm -hmm. physiology. So, um, yeah, I think that the island does a great job. Yeah. Awesome. I have two questions uh, for you guys, if I may, and they're both very different questions. Uh, the first question that came is actually from a few uh, current students down on the island, and they are asking about the housing situation. <laughs> you know, it's pretty clear cut in St. Kitts, right? Yeah. Um, and pretty much for clinical rotation. So they just want your feedback on what that housing is like. And then my next question will go directly to you. All right, well, we'll hear about the housing All first. Right, Let them get to that one. Should I take that one? Yeah, guys? go ahead. So I've been working, I'm the, um, the class rep for our class here in Maine, and I was um, for the last semester on the island as well. So I've been working very closely with the Maine housing um, staff here, and basically, we're just working on expanding the database so that there are more options that are available to students that are both um, financially feasible and appropriate for you know the space or the amount of roommates that um, that we that you need or have. Mm -hmm. So um, that I believe will be updated roughly July 26th. I've been working with um, Jackie and Carol, who both work up here in Maine, um, but. Basically, what I did was I asked all the students of our current class to write down their landlord's contact information and, you know, just generally gauge if they were happy with their living situation so that we could create a bigger pool of options for the future classes that are coming up. So stay tuned. Um, that nice will job. get updated soon. Yeah. Super. And there's great housing on the ocean side, yeah. too, right? There's some housing. <laughs> you guys are up during the summertime, yeah. but once the summer's gone, these yeah. students that come up in the wintertime, they get this wonderful housing. That's yeah. another thing or, that um, the summer semesters kind of have to battle with a little bit is just that Portland is such a big vacation attraction. And so because of that fact, not only do prices sometimes go a little <laughs> bit up a little higher than we'd like, <laughs> but also um, just the capacity of housing options decreases a little bit. But for the semesters that come up in September and January, those options open up quite significantly. So just keep that in mind. Um, but again, yeah, we're But great we're job also, it. great job on doing that. That's awesome because a lot of us as well, like for me, I, um, I went and I found a place myself that was never rented by uh, a student of ours before, and I know several other students as well had found these gem of a place. Mm -hmm. and so now we're going to add those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now now we have an expansion, you know, of of this of these places, so that we can help the incoming students. Yeah, like beyond the the preliminary housing database that we have, um, which is still expanding. Um, part of it, you know, I I couldn't find uh, what I, what I was looking for in a housing uh, environment uh, with the database that we had intact. So I actually looked to Airbnb and I found, you know, pretty pretty decent standard uh, living space. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, you know, tell tell my Airbnb host about it. And she actually mm -hmm. 
got really excited and interested because she was like, finally, I can rent out my rooms in, you know, the, the winter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that's uh, another option, too. You know, if, if, you know, maybe the housing database doesn't need to be your only place you look, there mm -hmm. are other options uh, to look at available as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And to switch it up, Dr. Tiller, sure. can you explain what this room is all about? And yes. Here? Well, that's the Wednesday we haven't gotten to. Wednesday, okay. so, Wednesday. Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday. So this is our clinical skills lab. And we've got Hal Dahl back there and <laughs> our simulation where we use mostly for our ACLS course. So in this room, these students learn many different procedures, IVs, how to place PPDs, how to do venipunctures. Even some get to do lumbar punctures if they finished all the other procedures, intubation, intubation. Mm -hmm. arterial blood gas. So we really get them working hard in a simulated situation. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have human, real human beings in here, but close, as close as we can get to it. So how have you guys enjoyed your clinical skills lab time? I love it. I, I love it's it. It's great go for yeah, the, yeah. the week, right? It's nice because we, we have small groups too. Like it's, it is literally a small group of students and mm -hmm. we first learn the skill and then we get separated into different areas and we all have the um, equipment to practice. And we just work together at our pace and um, we run through it. And then eventually we come in and we have what we call test out. So when you come in and test out, you do the whole procedure and it's either a complete or incomplete because they wanna make sure that you're doing everything thoroughly and in the right step order. And um, so you get that amount of time that you need to practice. And the days vary when you can get checked off on these skills. So there really is no rush you know, prior to the deadline for you to come in and get checked off on these skills. So you get the time, the attention that you need to practice and perfect the skills. And then, um, yeah, we just have fun. We we work together, we talk, we do scenarios. Um, it's really, really fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it's part of like our break almost. It's yeah. like a, you, <laughs> it's it's a the break. middle of the week. Yeah, you can yeah. consider it as a break pretty much. Yeah. Um, but you know, at, at, the, now. Yeah, yeah, at, the, at the backdrop, <laughs> at the backdrop of it all is that um, what you're doing, you know, there's a rhyme to the reason. Um, so, you know, for example, when you do an arterial blood gas, mm -hmm. you know, you can say, hey, I know why I'm doing that. And so you get a lot of like the, um, we always hear about it, you know, when we're uh, doing our diagnostics for, down on the island and we'll come up with a plan or something that we have to do or test for, you know, it's kind of just like, okay, so we do it, but you don't actually practice it. So here you actually get to really practice, you know, more of the, the uh, hands-on uh, mm -hmm. labor of medicine. Yeah. I like that labor of medicine. <laughs> I thought you were going to say labor of love. <laughs> I mean, anything yeah. else? To yeah, I mean, I think these guys pretty much said it all. It's just, it's just fun to finally put your, make it more hands-on. So whatever we learn, now we're putting into practice. And I think you guys said it exactly right. Yeah. So. And then, and the, then the, the, yeah, tell them about. Do you want to tell them about the actual exam, the final exam for that? And the, the cards. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, the envelopes. The yeah. envelopes. Yeah. The envelopes. So we get. Don't give um, it away now, Nina. No. <laughs> but um, basically, yeah. So when it comes time to do the final checkout, you are expected to know any one of the skills that we've been taught this entire um, semester so far. And so when one of the instructors calls you back to one of our virtual clinic rooms, we go in there and there are envelopes that are laid out onto the table and it's just kind of the luck of the draw. Whichever you pick um, has a skill inside with a scenario that you're supposed to analyze and then determine which skill you're supposed to be performing and then you do it and you do well <laughs> and, you, yep, and you pass along. So. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the system of checking out. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And so that was Wednesday. That was Wednesday. <laughs> that was Wednesday. 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 Okay. So can you recap a little bit? Sure. Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll go on to Thursday. Sure. <laughs> we kind of touched on Thursday already when Jared said a few things. But so Monday, lecture, small groups, and uh, really it's a time to bring the basic science into the clinical arena and uh, talk still about pathology, some pharmacology, and our lectures, our small groups are about trying to tweak our physical exams. Exactly. And reminding those little files that are a little dusted back there, bringing them forward with our neuro exam and our different types <laughs> of exams. Um, so that's on that's Mondays, and then Tuesdays we talked extensively about our virtual clinic, which is really the highlight I think of this program because of the great one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Basically, two educators, right? A standardized patient and attending, and then two students. That's a one-on-one -on -one ratio. You don't. I I've never seen that in any other institution. And you just posted. Sorry to interrupt, but you just yeah. posted something on YouTube. Right? I did. Yes. And that I did. Did that get out there? <laughs> so I'm going to have a little plug in here. What we'll okay. do for everyone in the audience, um, I'm going to uh, put a link up 
uh, underneath this video we'll drop it below. later <laughs> <laughs> so that you can actually see it. It's about 15 minutes long, yeah? So it's an actual mock virtual clinic that Nina and Jazz You guys are... had 15 minutes for your research? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, together. Well, well, it was both the doctor and the case presenters. So and the feedback. Was, yes. Mm -hmm. So it was within the standard time. But... You guys, I haven't seen it yet, so you'll be viewing it first. But, but I do want to give credit to Rachel Roberts for being our video yeah, producer for that. It's absolutely beautiful. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday we talked about. And then Thursday, we should probably talk a little more about our preceptorship program. So our yeah. students each spend 30 to 32 hours through the semester with our preceptors. And our preceptors come from many different specialties. We heard Desiree say she's with a you call them reconstructive surgeon, surgeon. Yeah. yeah, plastic surgeon, plastic reconstructive surgeon. surgeon. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke about working with an internal medicine. There's yep. a neurologist. There's you had Dr. the Burke. neurologist yeah. as well. Ah, Lots so of family practitioners out there. Radiation oncology. Um, we have a, re, a New England Rehab Center where it's an intensive experience where patients are coming in from ho the hospital needing to rehab, and they've got lots of problems, lots of good neurologic problems, like mm -hmm. the st stroke um, rehabbers and whatnot. So it's a great experience. So lots of breadth of, of uh, education, and our students will shadow until things get a little more comfortable, and some of our attendings allow the students to go right in on their own yep. and start taking yep. the history and physical. And this is not a standardized patient anymore. No. No. This is a real patient, <laughs> yeah. not being not being paid. This is a patient who's mm -hmm. in there to see the doctor. So you guys have had that experience of going in, seeing a patient, doing a physical, and then going to talk to the doctor outside the room and coming back in with the doctor mm -hmm. of the patient and reviewing what the case was about, maybe going through some of the physical exam and going through the diagnostics exactly. and the therapeutics. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, you know, you, you learn a lot about basic sciences on the island, but when you come to Maine, what we do is we take that knowledge and we bring it into the clinical world of how how can I, I kind of know a differential diagnosis, but how do I diagnose this and how do I treat this? Mm -hmm. So we take the next step from when the education that you had on the island. Yeah, because the big thing too is that it's, it's, it's cool in a, in a way that you go in to see a patient, but at the, at the end of the day is you, you come to realize that the patient has a disease or a disorder and there's a reason why they're there. So that's what Nina was talking about. You get to practice your humility almost mm -hmm. and say, great, you know, you diagnose him, but the reality is that that patient has, you know, a problem now and it could be, you know, lifelong. So it, it's great that it, it mm -hmm. helps you, you know, take, the, take the, the, the meaning of medicine out of the book and actually apply it, which is great. The art of medicine. The art of medicine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other thoughts that you guys had on your preceptorship experience? I, I loved, I love my preceptorship and... Um, I had Dr. Coates, he's a reconstructive surgeon, and he he um, is in a surgery center, so he does both surgeries, and then he has, like, a family medicine practice side where he takes, um, like, family practice there with between pediatrics. Um, they have a pediatric surgeon on hand. They have dermatologists on hand. Um, they do so many different procedures in there. Um, and he got me scrubbed in, and he took me half the time in for the surgeries, and the other half he took me for in-house patients. And... You could tell he really, really loved to teach and have his students there. He's had multiple students before, um, and he was very friendly and welcoming to show me to the staff, and he asked me questions both with the patient. He asked permission for the patient if he could, you know, ask me some questions while he was going through it. Um, he explained what he was doing throughout, so I just, I had a really great overall experience with him, so. And I, just to clarify also, um, so we, we, for me, I only had my preceptorship two days for two weeks. Okay. Uh, so the big thing too is that when you're, when you're done with your um, uh, preceptorship or when you, it's not your week, then you essentially have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off as well uh, if you don't have any, any uh, extra clinical lectures as well. So those were, you know, big days to, you know, catch up on studying, mm -hmm. go travel, go see things. Their Maine's beautiful. Mm -hmm. This time of year, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm excited for the fall. I'm staying here to study That's for good. the steps. So I'm, I'm I heard the winter's a little different. No, it's beautiful. Take your snowshoes out. Put your Come bikes on. away. If Take you're coming in the out. winter, bring a coat. <laughs> and some spikes, some <laughs> yak tracks. True. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to touch on, you know, something that Desiree said about her preceptor is that they love teaching, yeah. and I couldn't agree more. I had um, a neurologist as my preceptor, Dr. Burke, He's awesome. um, who's incredible, <laughs> and he just has so much excitement about teaching, and, you know, I just happened to luck out in that I had him 
right before we had our neurology week in virtual nice. clinic. Lucky, lucky. Yes. <laughs> so, but he was just so excited to, you know, if there was a gap, if a patient couldn't make it to their appointment, he would take us into, um, a, you know, um, a, a doctor's office and kind of just have us go through the motions of doing the, a proper, you know, full neurological exam. And then later on in that day, we were, you know, he, he would ask us, oh, would you mind doing that, that physical exam on this patient? Yeah. So, I felt super prepared for virtual clinic after having basically done everything in practice on a real patient. And that was, that was invaluable. Like it was incredible. So another really cool thing about um, my preceptorship that kind of happened spontaneously is that a lot of the doctors through Maine Med, they participate in these weekly convention seminars where all the doctors get together of different specialties and they discuss cases that happen through the hospital. And I actually got to go during our lunch to one of the tumor board conferences. So I got to meet other doctors and sit in there and they knew, you know, I was a guest or a student and they all introduced, asked me where I was from. And um, it was really nice because I got to sit amongst them and listen and, and look at all of the x-rays and CTs and, and hear a lot about the patients that they had seen from this day to this day. And, and it was a cool experience. Yeah. Super. I'm going to jump back in here because we have a few questions. Uh, we have a lot of varied questions from current students as well as prospective students. A lot that are geared around financing the housing situation in Maine. But before we get to those questions, I actually want to talk about our third part of our main program, which is the Kaplan program. We have some really good questions about the Kaplan program. But before we address those questions, I just want you guys to go ahead and jump in and talk about the Kaplan program that you're actually doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for all the students out there that are asking questions, we're going to get to all of your questions and make sure that they're all answered today. But just to give you a little bit of a time check, we're going to go on for about another 15 minutes or so. Thank you. So Kaplan, six weeks, eight to five. Yeah, for the most part. But, man, it is awesome so far. They give us, at the beginning of the semester, during our orientation, we get a pack of books. And it's probably like 50 pounds. <laughs> but it has, it has physio, biochem, anatomy, anatomy farm. genetics, uh, and uh, micro, micro and farm, yeah. Behavioral and biostats. Yeah, so we, we just get a full box. And some people just don't even open them until, like, the day of, you know, <laughs> okay, well, it's time. I, I peaked, and, you know, some of them are different sizes and everything. Um, but so we just finished up. We're finishing up with our first week of uh, physio. Mm -hmm. And so then our next one is biochem, right? Yep. Um, and we are having an awesome time with, with our professor right now. Like, he just keeps everything alive. I miss Nagapa on the island. <laughs> Shout out to <laughs> But, um, you know, I think it's part two that, uh, you know, we've done so much since these classes that it's really easy now to like see the bigger picture and to uh, connect all these different things. Mm -hmm. So um, it also definitely does just emphasize the point that we're that much closer to, to writing this stuff, which is cool. And if you engage in the classroom, like for instance, I started doing Kaplan questions from the QBank this semester, like at the very beginning before the Kaplan review, and I would make some mistakes here and there. And then especially with physio now, we're in physio and I'm like, oh, I got that question wrong in my Kaplan QBank. But then when he sparks the conversation, like you said, and ties everything together with the experience in the clinical vignettes and everything. And they also do questions with us. I think he yep. said today we had done already in 170. five days, 170 questions in class in just five days. And I was just like, oh, now I understand thoroughly why I got that question wrong. Yeah. And you know, and you feel like good about it. So how, a question from the audience, how does the transition from the Kaplan course prepare for the USMLE exam. I know there's a diagnostic exam at the beginning, but is there a required exam at the end? Yes, thanks. I didn't finish that train of thought. So there is um, a qualifier exam and students have to pass. There's a certain number they have to pass in order to move forward to sit for their steps. So that happens at the end of the six weeks. There's a three or four day study period that mm -hmm. you guys downtime and then you come in and downtime. you take your yeah, <laughs> down study time and then you come in and you take your eight hour exam. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the qualifier exam. Once they pass that, then they can move forward to sit for the step. Super. And another question that was actually asked a little while ago, but it, it pertains to Kaplan. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys get the Kaplan materials to study. I know you guys might not be able to answer this because you're still going through the program, but after they finish the Kaplan, do they need to get more materials to study for step? What, in, in your experience as an educator, what do you... 
I, well, you can ask these guys what oh, they yeah, use. Yeah. There's all kinds of things that people use okay. that are available. Usually the Kaplan is used up until the point of their final, their exam, their qualifier exam, and then there's a switch made. We yeah. just yeah. Uh, we just had a Kaplan, a Kaplan um, seminar that was information. held, information seminar that was um, for all of us in Maine, and then it talked about preparing for the step and how to use the Kaplan resources. And they made like a really nice schedule for us on, you know, ways to follow it to get to gear us towards step. And they even said from the Kaplan team that this is a great way to put everything together to give you that big, strong basis in transitioning from St. Kitts to Maine. And then once we're done with this Kaplan question bank and exhausted those materials, then we're, we got this foundation that we can go take to use other resources that we want, depending on the timeline that we're going to take to take the step. Instead but, of re-going over and over exactly, to Kaplan, you've already exactly. got the questions. Exactly. So you once you've exhausted that material and right. we've gotten through Maine, then you can, you take that assessment exam and you say, okay, what's my score? How do I feel about this? What's my goal as far as going into the step? What do I need to do to enhance that a little bit more or just say, you know, stay consistent and then you will take on other resources as you right. like. Yeah. And there's another, Kaplan, there's other resources when you get towards step two. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so we're think, just talking one right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think also just across the board, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think even in our Kaplan information session, two resources that are used across the board outside of Kaplan are going to be your first aid textbook and you world question bank. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are your go-to. Um, everything outside of that, whether you want to continue using Pathoma videos, sketchy micro farm and path that they now have videos for. Um, yeah, there's several different resources. It's just about what you click best with. But like I said, I think the two go-tos that are a must-have are the first aid in the U world. Yeah. Definitely. After the Kaplan. Right, yeah. after Kaplan. Because yeah. yeah. pretty much everything beyond this point is all supplemental. Uh, but you can go on Reddit, Reddit and just find uh, like what people are doing and how they're scoring based off of like their prep. And basically the, the uh, equation is pretty much U World, First Aid, and Pathoma. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's it, videos for pretty much anything. Uh, Boards, of, Boards and Beyond is another uh, one yeah. that's pretty solid. You guys are given the Kaplan early on. Well, I'm not sure about your group, but they're given the Kaplan early mm -hmm. on on the island. Yeah. Yeah. First, 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 yeah. That yeah. wasn't the case when you guys were first there, right? Or did we you had get access to semester. it. Okay. We okay. had access to it kind of early on, mm -hmm. I would say, but I don't think it was um, as integrated, integrated yeah. as it is now. Yeah. It, they've done a great job integrating. Yeah. yeah. Super. I'm just going to move a little bit closer so the audience can hear some of the questions. So if you guys don't mind, just do a quick recap again for any of the, the newbies that joined us, how the fifth semester works. And then I've got a couple <laughs> questions that I want to backtrack about housing for you guys. Okay. So I guess we'll do the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday <laughs> gig, quick, okay. and then Kaplan. And then, uh, okay. and, then, right. and then I'll shoot out some so, questions. The goal of this semester, the overriding umbrella goal, is to take the basic science and make take the knowledge gained from the basic science and apply it to clinical medicine. And that's really what our goal is. And the students come here extremely prepared with their basic science, but need to get uh, more education about diagnostic th thinking, clinical reasoning, mm -hmm. doing therapeutics and diagnostics. So we take them through pretty heavy duty beginning of the week. Mondays are lectures, small groups where there's a one to eight ratio with docs to students and move forward with uh, Tuesdays where we do our virtual clinic sessions. Wednesdays are clinical skills lab. This is the lab that we use, but also on Wednesdays we have, we didn't talk about this, clinical therapeutic lectures. And that includes lectures on EKG, geriatrics, pediatrics, dermatology, lots of subspecialty type lectures, which is just a potpourri of cool kind of things. And then Thursday, Friday, our students go on to their preceptors. And when they're in preceptors, they're really hip to hip with, with a doctor. Um, and they gain that real life experience. Also on Fridays, we have a few other lectures that mm -hmm. include ethics, mm -hmm. ophthalmology, and our third drug one is drug addiction, addiction yeah. medicine, which mm -hmm. is just a phenomenal thing to be learning this early in, in their careers, I think. So that's the, I think the recap you yeah, wanted. That's okay. great. And Desiree, I have a question for you specifically from one of the audience members. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is my mom. <laughs> um, and I, I hope it makes sense to you. Why did you make the decision to stay and study for Step in Maine? Okay, that's a great question. Um, well, my situation back home is a little different because my family's kind of moving all over right now and I don't have like a stable place to stay back home. So um, one of the most important things, and this is just my opinion, is that 
you need to have a consistent atmosphere um, when studying for the step. And from the moment I came here, um, my housing situation, I had a nice, nice little office space at my place and I just feel really comfortable there. And so far it's been a really great atmosphere um, for me and I'm excited for the fall. <laughs> um, and so I'm just gonna stay, I'm gonna stay um, and I'm gonna study there and I'm gonna take the step. We actually have a ProMetric testing site literally right next to our school. And I yeah. like walk past it when I'm going to my car every day. So that doesn't get you um, nervous. I don't but, know. But it's a side note on that. So, and you know, I I have resources while being here in Maine too. So, you know, once you leave here, you're not kicked off the campus. You can come see whoever you need to see whenever. And that's, you know, we become We're family. here for you. Yeah, we're family <laughs> here, so. The other thing you'll hear from Mia Taylor when she does her discussion with you guys is one of the biggest things that you need to be leery about is distractions when you're exactly. studying. Exactly. And I think when you go back home to your family, guess what, they haven't seen you. And this is what she'll tell you. Yes. You guys will hear it again. but. They haven't seen you for a little while, yeah. so they just want to take you out to dinner, they want to take you to the movie, take I'm you to the okay golf course. My, my, <laughs> my, my, my second reason is I'm a cool aunt, so I know if I go home, they're going to want to share their bunk bed with me, so I better <laughs> stay right here. here um, and so I just, I just highly recommend that you kind of figure out and you think about that, where is the best place for me to stay put and study and um, prepare for that step. So. I think that's very important that you highlight that and yeah. students don't necessarily understand it before yeah. they come into medical school, yeah. how you cannot have any distractions exactly. whatsoever. Um, and in coming in coming here from day one, um, I, there are quite a bit of students that are sticking around. It happens every semester to study for the staff. And I mean, they're using the resources on the main campus. They're coming in, they're studying, they're visiting. So, you know, it's it happens every semester. Now, in, in your opinion, uh, before I go back to housing, because I'll, I'll do a nice transition for that, because there's a lot of questions about housing for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a question in the audience, you know, how long should you really truly take to study for step one? So, uh, the, bi the biggest advice that we've been getting is, I mean, this semester, the first half, it really is dedicated for, for ICM2, but we do have six weeks of dedicated Kaplan certified questions, and these, these guys have been doing, like, um, our physio professor, he said that he's been going around campus to campus to campus. They send him everywhere. So he really knows, and he says that he does a lot of the questions too. So he knows, you know, what we really need to be focusing on. Um, and that really does help us, you know, uh, take full advantage of this time that we have just for the dedicated. And, you know, uh, my plan is for uh, six weeks. Six weeks I'm going to take. October 11th is my date that I want to take it. Okay. And so having a plan and, you know, kind of sticking with it this exactly. whole semester, I think really helps you work towards that goal. Yeah. I think one way also to kind of put a more um, concrete idea of how long, um, once you get up to this semester, um, as we've been mentioning, Mia Taylor, she's incredible. She's our education specialist. Mm -hmm. um, so she, she, you know, this is what she does. She knows how to best advise you, but what she'll tell you, and this is something that she has said to me, um, is that you really need to look at what your MBME, which are essentially practice tests, mm -hmm. how you're scoring over a certain amount of time. And once you reach um, a plateau in your scores, that is an indicator that you are ready. So you don't really want to push it too far past that, but you also don't want to go before you're ready. And for everyone, it's different. So I guess the real answer is there is no right answer. And piggy, right. piggyback so, on what you said when we were talking about that Kaplan seminar for the step prep, when you're asking about the resources. So once we've exhausted the Kaplan Q Bank and we've taken that exam exam here in Maine, um, she said, you know, maybe give yourself a couple days and then you take you take the exam, yeah, the NBME, NBME, and you see where you fall, and then you say to yourself, okay, what are my goals? What What is the score that I'm looking for? Then you create that intense study plan for the six weeks, whatever it is that you need to take to take the step. You know, it's individualized. And then you just go full throttle. You use your next resources, maybe your U world, like you said, with the first aid hand in hand. And then you just continue, maybe take another NBME, what did you say, like six weeks, four to six weeks before you take this step and see where you find that plateau and you just you take the step. And she's so. always available for you yeah. too, yeah. as you guys know, to help you with that decision. Mm -hmm. When do I sit? Am I ready to sit? Yes. Yeah. Super. And you know, I think this is actually a good time to actually call Mia in because I didn't realize that she was right around the corner. <laughs> so when you hear me, just come on over from your office. There's a little bit of a delay. So when you get here, um, in the meantime, if you guys can just talk a little bit about housing, 
and um, you know transportation. What do you do? Because I think that's a big worry for a lot of students. Yeah. How do you get around in Portland and so on? Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, do you so I live in Westbrook. If you're not familiar, <laughs> it's about it's about 15 minutes away, and. Um, so there's a couple people who live out where I do, and um, it's, it really does depend. You know, do you live with people or do you not live with anybody? Uh, unfortunately, I've got one of my friends that lives close by, um, so we haven't done it yet. But you know, whenever we need to, we can just share a ride if we need to go somewhere. Uh, we'll we'll pretty much always do that. Uh, and I I live about 20 minutes out, but I literally just have to hop on the turnpike and I'm here. And it's just you go one way, you go to this area, go one way, go into Portland, so it's easy accessible and since I'm from Michigan, I had my car at home and I, I drove it up here. Um, but I know a lot of students, they room together or they carpool um, or they rent cars and students from semester to semester, if they have a car that they own, they will sell that car to another incoming student. So you can look, you can find that out through your current class if you're in the last semester to see what cars would be available um, from the main semester. Yeah. I. I... I had a similar situation. I'm from Chicago, just outside of it. So I drove my car up and my both my roommates are from Puerto Rico. And so we just, you know, we just came to an agreement that we're all going to split the cost of driving the car around. But that way it was easier for them to not have to search for a car. But and we all come and go to exactly the same places. Yeah. So we literally it all worked out that way car. that financially it just worked out that way. And it was convenient um, that I was already driving my car up. So and a lot of the um, a lot of the activities that we do, like preceptorship and stuff like that, you can prearrange at the beginning mm -hmm. of the semester. They do a pretty good job, I think, here on the campus to coordinate where if you need to carpool with someone that they make that happen so that you get, you know, you get where you need to go. Yeah. Rachel spends hours putting she, that she list is, together. Yeah. She Believe makes it. sure that yeah, you guys yeah. tell her who, yeah. who's carpooling. So from day one, they yeah. know, you know, who you're living with and what kind of needs that, you know, right. you need and they help you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm just going to scoot in here real quick. I just want uh, Mia to come on in and introduce herself because she's been chatting with a lot of you back and forth. So Mia, come on in. Okay. Just introduce yourself quickly <laughs> and then I guess go back to chatting. Thank you. You can stand right there and just uh, say who you are, what you do, and all that good stuff. I'm Mia Taylor and I am what's the education <laughs> specialist, student <laughs> advisor. That's we right. And crowned you. Advisor. you know, there's a whole bunch of different hats here too. <laughs> The emergency person and then the remediation person mm -hmm. and just kind of there if anybody needs to talk. So, and I've been doing this for many years. So, so it's it's about resources, right? Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's it's about outcomes, and that's mm -hmm. so important uh, for President Ross mm -hmm. to make sure that we're not just taking in hundreds of students like a lot of the other schools are doing out there. We're taking in students that we know that you're going to make it to the end of the road, whether it's three and a half years, four years, or four and a half years. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it seems to me coming up here, I don't come up here very often, but you guys have an incredible amount of resources, a great team up here. Um, so my question to you, Mir, or anybody that wants to take it, do students take advantage of all the services that they have up here? If not, oh, and yeah. or like let's say, you know, me, I know I, as a student, I was shy, hiding in the corner. What do you do about those students? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. You can't hide. They'll find you. <laughs> I'll spare you out. <laughs> so what happens is um, on the very first day, we all touch each one of our students. Um, they go around and during registration and on orientation, again, we, we make sure that we uh, get to know you guys. It's always a small group. You know, it's never over. Well, this was like one of our biggest classes ever, 90, but usually it's between like 70 and 80 or something like that. So, I mean, we get to know each one of them very well. Um, during the semester, I touch base with each one mm -hmm. of you guys. You all came into my office for a study <laughs> plan. You know, if you want a little bit of help, you know how to study, then we do that. Um, I don't know, and we're just all there for questions. Any questions you guys have, mm -hmm. we've got open door policy here, which mm -hmm. is really nice. And yeah, I do think we don't usually lose a student down the cracks or anything like that. I, I can. I can speak for all of us that we all know each one of the students. There's a lot of interaction on the campus. So even if you are shy, they're going to bring a little something out of you and, and 
and warm you up a little bit. So yeah. a lot yeah. of safety and support nets too yeah. for, for all the students. Our know. Julie's and our Jackie's exactly. 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 walking the hallways, making our sure we, yeah, we have a lot of students. I know. I see you guys coming down on virtual clinic day, high five and right yeah. down the line on the way into virtual yeah. clinic. That's sweet. That's great. Mia, thank you so much. I You're appreciate welcome. it. And thank you for talking to all the students on Facebook Live as well. <laughs> Thanks, Mia. I'm just going to shoot around in the back here. Um, so I just wanted to actually give a shout out to our president, President Warren Ross, who's actually typing with students right now. So if you have any questions, you know, I, I think. Sorry, we the... stole your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one of the, the great things uh, about working for UMHS is that we do have an open door policy. And if you have a direct line to the president, which, you know, you don't really have at a lot of schools. So take advantage of it, because, again, what's important to him, to us, to all of us, are the outcomes. Uh, we'll give you whatever resources that you need. If you have any issues or concerns, you if I can't answer it right away, I'll try and find an answer as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so any questions that you have, just go ahead and, and chat them in the box there. Uh, I'm going to throw out another question to you guys. Okay. Um, what has been your biggest struggle thus far in fifth semester? That's a great question. I think Who wants can... to start? <laughs> Nina I'll looks start. like she's great. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm all ears, Nina. Yeah. Let me yeah. take some notes. Okay. Um, no, um, I just think that, you know, jumping into the ICM2 portion right away is we, especially since the first part of the week is so heavy in comparison to the second half of the week is time management. I think we can all agree that yeah. the first couple Monday nights of the semester oh, were geez. We're a little stressful, mm -hmm. um, just trying to get through, okay, we just had that long lecture, so we need to review it if we didn't already preview it the Sunday before, um, you know, and then <laughs> the first couple of weeks, virtual clinic is stressful because mm -hmm. you don't know what to expect, there's a real life patient in there, um, so you want to get it all right, but yeah. that's not what it's about. It's it's about okay. Well, inevitably we will make a mistake or two, and then it comes out, and then you never forget it again. Yeah. Um, I can't. I can't even. You know. I can just. I know all of the mistakes that I made, and now I'm like, okay. Well, now that that was brought to light. I exactly. won't make that mistake yeah. again. So yeah. um, I'm with you Dr. on that. Sweet. Time My management <laughs> in the yeah. beginning Whitney was up. tricky. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, it's like you get excited coming here and you make all these goals for yourself. I'm like, I'm going to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And then next thing you know, it's like 10 o'clock and you're like, no, I'm not, it's not going to happen tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're tired. It's an endurance. And, um, you know, just taking that um, Kaplan assessment exam when you first come the eight hours, I, I remember from like my fifth block, I was getting really fatigued and I'm like, okay, it's okay. Just just do your best and get through this because this is an assessment and we're really lucky that we have this opportunity. And then it's what you do with it afterwards, the time management, the study plan um, that really helps you. And, and I've noticed a lot of personal growth through the short amount of time here, you know, and the attention that we've been given. Um, and it's just rolling with it and taking it and just staying strong, staying confident, staying positive. You have the support you need here. Um, but I definitely think the endurance was <laughs> was a struggle for yeah. me. <laughs> Super, I have a question uh, from our audience. How many exams do you have and how often during the organ system review before Kaplan starts? So there's a midterm and a final exam. And the final, there are two written. So a midterm and a final written exam. And then we have an OSCE, which is our uh, last virtual clinic, which is higher stakes than the other virtual clinics. We call it OSCE, but really they're all OSCEs. It's just the final yeah. OSCE. And then you have your clinical skills checkout, which is the final checkout where there's a grade associated with that. And you have so the, what did that add up to be? Four? four. And then you have four. the virtual clinic exams every week. Well, yeah. virtual clinic yeah. sessions Session that exam, you yeah. are graded and evaluated on. Yeah. Yeah. So those could be, I'm not sure they would be considered exams per se, but they're yeah. definitely the performance. Yeah. You're, you're performing, so, yeah. and you're evaluated. Yeah. And contributing to the grade. Did that answer the question that yeah. was asked? What was the second half? Yeah, what was that? the second half? I oh, don't quite um, understand the that. The organ second. system? Sorry, let me pull no, that's it right okay. back up. I think it was just asking yeah. so there's eight know, organs. How systems. many do we have before Kaplan? Before Kaplan. So, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So I think that answers right. So we, we have eight have weeks of eight organs before exams. Organ systems. Yeah. And then it, for Kaplan, uh, it's not uh, systems based, it's actually class based. So subject based. Subject based. Yeah, subject based, yeah, subject -based. Yeah, subject -based learning. 
But ICM2 is systems-based learning. ICM, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's like great because it crosses over. Right. And I think one of the things that we tell me and I try to stress to the students is this is going to be a, a time where you have to balance a lot of time management, as you guys have mentioned. Mm -hmm. But you're going to ICM lectures. You're learning about the respiratory system. Why not study the pharmacology, respiratory farm, respiratory physio, respiratory anatomy during that week? And, that's and do why your questions in sync, exactly. integrated. And that's why yeah. it's so great because it allows you to, you know, cover your first aid book, you know, if you're going by that, it allows you to cover that and to do every knockout, every single subject on that topic, systems-based. Mm -hmm. So systems-based with subject supplemental learning too. I just want to ask these guys a question because I think one thing that makes us a strength compared to, I've worked with many medical schools. I've been in medical education for almost 25 years. I had to do the math today. It's about <laughs> 23 years. So it's a long time. So I've, I've seen a lot of different medical school systems. And one of the things that I think is quite unique is the voice of a student here at UMHS is always heard, not with one ear and not out through the other, but heard with both ears and with intense listening. And I feel that I like it when I get a lot of feedback mm -hmm. from our, our, our student rep, actually. Nina attends our, our meetings, our staff meetings, and gives us feedback. Every time we have a staff meeting, she's there. So my question to you guys is how did you feel about, uh, were, were you heard by us here? Do you feel like there's, you're leaving some change, you're leaving some ideas for change Absolutely. for next semester think, based on your experience. Yeah, because of our size, you know, I think that that was a big factor too, you know, how was the program adapting with, with our caliber and size of students? And um, the big thing too is that, you know, Vicki Stevens, she's one of the uh, clinical instructors too. And preceptor she, and pre coordinator, she does it all. Coordinator. <laughs> yeah. she, she always uh, talks about an ACLS and, and even just for another, with our uh, skills lab about closed loop communication. Mm -hmm. And whenever you send an email, you're always going to get an email back. If it's not by from one person, it's by multiple people, because then you know that message was, you know, transmitted down the line to somebody else mm -hmm. who could actually, you know, take care of it. If somebody didn't have an immediate response, it would always be taken care of. So Desiree came to me one day and said, I have an idea on how to change the virtual clinic a little bit. Let me <laughs> run it by you. And what did we do? We took that idea, dear. Yeah, we had yeah. three students teed up to get videotaped, yes. and they all had the experience changing it up a little. And, you know, we're thinking about your idea. We still may not process it for next semester yet, but okay. we may get there eventually. Okay. But her idea was heard, and, yeah. and you've heard a lot of patient feedback, uh, student feedback. Yeah. Do you well, have anything else? That's one thing that I've taken very seriously as the class rep, um, even back on the island. If, if there was ever an issue that I could relay to the powers that be, or, you know, administration in this case, um, I took it very seriously. And that goes back to, you know, what we were talking about earlier with housing, our class was, is currently the largest class, um, well, maybe second, second largest, second largest. <laughs> 96, 92. Um, yeah. but yeah, so we ultimately were a very big class and coming up um, in the summer months makes things a little tricky in terms of housing. And I know that that worried our class a little bit. Um, so I just did whatever I could to get that message across to, you know, in this case, President Ross or, um, you know, more of the staff up in New York and here in Maine, just so that we're heard that this is something that we're worried about and it was dealt with very quickly and we're building on it now. So it just goes to show that along the way, regardless of you know whether it was an overnight fix or not, our concerns were heard and mm -hmm. we were taken care of ultimately. I mean, we all have housing now, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it and was. And Alyssa was very, from financial aid in New York, she was very receptive to a few of the questions I had from this past week's visit. Um, so she left it open through email to all of our class to contact her for Thursday. She's gonna be doing an online webinar to answer all these questions yes. right then and there. So she was just really quickly there to answer my question. And I was like, you know, I'm sure a lot of our students in our class have the same question. If you could maybe send an email, she goes, oh, I'll just do an online free webinar. I'm like, okay, addresses this all time. Us at once. Yeah, yeah. So. so it's great. So you guys feel heard. Yes, yeah, absolutely. and I want to say appreciate all your feedback. And if you were to go back three years ago when I started this program, it does not look like it started three years ago. So <laughs> it's all because of the feedback and the Good. legacies yeah. that you're all leaving, whether it's a mock video you're leaving behind, yeah. an idea for a virtual clinic, and just continual smiles and media from Jared and saying, <laughs> keep going. So you guys have done great. Super. You. And, you know, I just want to finish up with just a couple more questions. And one question anybody can take um, is, I, so, so you do ICM-1 in basic sciences on the island. That's with uh, Dr. Dr. Kumar. Dr. Kumar. Yeah. Dr. Kumar, right? Hey, Dr. Kumar, I hope you're watching. <laughs> and 
same uh -huh. menu of ICM2 here. So a very, very good question is, uh, are they matching up well? That's, that must be a New Yorker that asked that question because it's like straight, you know. There's also PD on the island, physical diagnosis, yes, physical and ICM-1, just yeah. those two. Yeah. So yeah. they want to know the correlation. Are they matching up for you guys? Did you, you can see be honest. Gaps or well, yeah, absolutely. Be I, th I think the biggest part of the, the biggest difference between ICM-1 and ICM-2 is ICM-1, we do learn the fundamental skills, mm -hmm. but ICM-2 is really about clinical thinking and applying almost everything that, you know, we're learning and developing those skills even further. So it, the expectation is here, uh, here is that ICM-1 teaches you everything you need to know to do the physical examination, but then ICM-2 is really about um, developing your clinical mindset and clinical mm -hmm. judgment too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's taking all those, those skills that you learn and it's taking it to the next step, integrating um, the symptoms, the diagnosis, the treatment, and the plan, and then you're having this conversation with, with the patient and you're doing what you call like a teach back. So you're making sure that you're communicating effectively with the patient and then you're making sure that they understand enough to tell you back what they learned from your visit and it's just a really holistic way of putting everything together. Yeah and I think just to touch on something that happened earlier this year that can contribute to the fluidity between the two um, ICM-1 and ICM-2 is that President Ross put together a leadership conference on the island where he invited um, you know, uh, faculty and staff from Maine, from New York, um, the clinical department chairs across the country, and they all met up in St. Kitts together just to address uh, things like this, just to make sure that everything's fluid, everyone's on the same page. And I think that, you know, um, Dr. Thibodeau and Dr. Kumar also had an opportunity being face to face on the island um, so that if anything, if they, if there were discrepancies between the two programs, they addressed them and, and made the fluidity and the transition better for us. Yeah, and we're given that schedule in the manual, the book, that's really, really great put together to keep everything organized as far as the skills go. We do we do really ab abide by the Bates videos too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so that's something that's introduced to us on St. Kitts. But you know, Dr. Kumar, Dr. Gauda, <laughs> Dr. Ambadi, all you guys put Dr. together. Dr. Dr. Kumar, <laughs> yeah, all, all you guys, you know, put together nice videos too that are like the, the good foundations for us. And then Bates is pretty much, you know, the, is there a question? Go to Bates. What does Bates say? So, um, and what you guys that. don't see is Mohan, Dr. Kumar and I and his team, actually, there was this time period there where we were going through each of the systems and making sure that we're teaching the systems exactly the same. Yeah. Yep. So that when you come here, it's not, a, oh, that's a different way of teaching the lung exam, the heart exam, the musculoskeletal exam, or the neuro exam, right? So there's been a lot of communication. Mohan and I were just on like a week ago at nine o'clock at night chit-chatting about the, the differences that we're seeing. So it's it's a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. it definitely continues to be a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the whole thing, you know, trying to connect the two programs from St. Kitts also the to Portland, Maine. So, mm -hmm. but that's one of the benefits too. If we can keep, you know, an open channel with with each other, it just makes the program even better, mm -hmm. especially with the feedback. So, my very last question for everybody before I close this out is, and I know it's a little bit premature because you're in the midst of Kaplan review right mm -hmm. now, but do you feel like you're prepared to walk into a hospital during your first clinical rotation? Because that is one of the primary points of this program. Do you feel ready? I think so. I think, I think so. so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we'll be <laughs> terrified, I'm sure, no doubt. But um, yeah, I think that we've give, we've been given all the tools to really show off how great the education we've gotten so far has been. Yeah, this is a really exciting time. It's there's a lot of excitement and uh, there's a lot of motivation and there's a lot of one on one attention. So whatever needs or personal attention you need for, you know, your foundation skills, you're going to get in multiple ways. You're getting it through the question bank, through the classroom, lectures, through the virtual clinic, and you're addressing all of the areas that you need to successfully go and sit for the step and then um, go and represent UMHS in your clinical rotation. So um, my small group leader, Dr. Boulanger said, uh, the whole purpose for ICM2 isn't the grade. And that's such a problem because as med students, we're all caught up <laughs> with the grades. Uh, but he said the, the main focus for ICM2 really should be um, the, the doctor that you have as your small group leader really wants you to feel comfortable in developing your clinical skills uh, developing your history. Can mm -hmm. my student take, you know, a competent history and can mm -hmm. I trust this history? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what uh, I, I think we work towards, you know, for the for the, the first part of the semester. 
And so then the I clinical reasoning that goes the along clinical with reasoning, that. Yeah, exactly. And being able to develop a plan. So I think that's something that was really worthwhile for mm -hmm. the ICM-2 and definitely has been developed. Super. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If uh, we did not answer a question that you had, we might have overlooked it because we had a lot of questions coming in. Feel free to just shoot us a message and we'll get back to you. I want to thank everybody here today. Uh, in a couple of years, you'll be walking into their offices. <laughs> We're very proud. Dr. Tavella, thank you very, very much for, sure. for leading this campus in the direction that it needs to go. Sure. Uh, and I think that we are going to be graduating some very compassionate physicians out there. Uh, so any questions that you have, please let us know. Also, if you have any suggestions for what you would like to see for the next Facebook Live, Go ahead and put it in the comments down there, and we'll definitely accommodate that. Special thanks to Ryan, to Mia, <laughs> and to Rachel. Thank you, everybody. See Bye. You. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye from Portland. <laughs>